Round nine of the Tartar Steel Tournament and another dramatic day. There was some crazy Nidorfs again, but I'm not going to show you one of those. I'm going to show you a crazy King's Indian. And we have Radislav Wojtaszek against Fabiano Caruana. Now, it's unusual to see Caruana on the black side of a King's Indian, so clearly he wanted to go for it today. And, well, not unexpectedly, Wojtaszek, a very classical, orthodox player, plays bishop e2 main line. And here, of course, knight c6 is the main move, putting pressure on d4, which induces d5, and we have this locked position. But instead, Caruana went for bishop g4. Now, this is unusual. I suppose you could say there's also uh, the intention to put some pressure on the dark squares. But, well, yeah, it, it is unusual. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll be seeing more of this. I mean, White could simply play d5 here. That's certainly not a bad move. And then Black will play a5 and knight a6 and put the knight on c5. One big question is what Black wants to do with this bishop. Is it going to go back to d7 or do you want to exchange here? You could also take on e5, although this should be fine for black. Remember, there's a, a big hole on d4 that a knight would love to land on. Um, I wonder if this move might give white a little advantage if it's played correctly, although that bishop on g7 is, is a fantastic piece. In any case, uh, Wojtaszek played bishop e3. That's all irrelevant. <laughs> So Wojtaszek just wanting to hold the situation in the centre, and it looks very plausible, of course. With the bishop on g4, there's no knight g4 to hit that bishop. And Caruana thought for about four and a half minutes, and voluntarily exchanged off bishop for knight on f3. And then he exchanged pawns on d4. Knight c6 attacks the bishop. You want to keep the dark squared bishop, of course, otherwise the one on g7 will be too strong, so the bishop comes back. And rook e8. So white has the two bishops, but at the moment they're not doing very much. And uh, that bishop, for example, is, is potentially in range of the knight on c6. If white had a couple of moves, you'd want to just play g3 and drop the bishop to g2, and that would certainly give white more security. But it's just a slightly slightly awkward position for that bishop. It has to protect that e-pawn as well. Queen d2 played by Wojtaszek. Knight d7, so that opens up this bishop and potentially prepares to swing the knight c5 or maybe e5. Rook d1. Now, here is where Caruana made a decision which surprised, not, perhaps shocked is a better word, many people watching. Um, you had players like Ivan Sokolov on Twitter saying, well, listen, I've got to sort of rethink my whole way of looking at the King's Indian. Nigel Short as well uh, was very surprised at this move. What did Fabi play? He took on c3 after about six minutes thought. He said this wasn't actually preparation, but he'd seen this move in similar positions. Giving up that wonderful dark squared bishop on g7 for a knight. Wow. But here's why. Queen f6, and it's all to do with the slightly awkward position of these bishops, particularly the one on f3. So the queen comes to f6. Now, if queens are exchanged, then you can see straight away that white is going to lose that pawn on e4, and, and black should be fine. I mean, this is, it's actually possible to play like this for white just to give up that pawn and just play this position because actually 
white will station rooks on c1, d1, and it's actually very hard for black to, to manoeuvre those knights and move them out of the way. Those bishops are very good. I would say there's a dynamic balance in the position. So that's the rationale behind queen f6, that basically it's this pawn that is vulnerable because that bishop just can't get out of the way. You can't protect it with f3. So queen c1 played by Wojtaszek. Knight c5. Again, you can see there's pressure on that pawn. And queen b1. By the way, if that knight is taken, then this is the dream scenario for black knight. Will land on d4, and that's just wonderful. So queen b1. So this little maneuver. The queen defends the pawn from b1. Um, presumably Wojtaszek didn't want to leave the queen on c2. He thought it might be vulnerable to attack at some moment. But queen e6, and you can see that the queen attacks c4, but also now there are three pieces attacking e4. So basically Wojtaszek has to give up a pawn here. And here he played rook e1, saving the e-pawn. But maybe he should have played b4. Let the e-pawn go. And once again we have this situation where white has these bishops and actually having lost the e-pawn, maybe that bishop on f3 is actually the better place now. Uh, because if the knight ever retreats, then of course the bishop just screams across the board um, and the bishop on e3 looking very stable here as well it's it's actually quite hard for black to make progress here certainly white has enough compensation but rook e1 played queen takes c4 and now a few delicate steps by the queen Actually, it's just coming all the way back to f6. I can sort of understand why Wojtaszek wanted to do this. He's looking to play the bishop to the long diagonal and hoping that he can perhaps set up some kind of battery um, and with the queen uh, and that the king will be weak. But actually, it's really hard for white to organize anything seriously here it's it's that bishop that is again the problem you know if it were back on g2 with the pawn on g3 and you could organize f4 that's a different story but here that knight is actually beautifully placed on e5 and after h4 threat here we're now g5 you can see that black is controlling this key f4 square, which means that the knight is beautifully placed on e5. And black really is in, in control here. So here's how the game went. Queen g6. So potentially a little bit of pressure here. Bishop came back to e2. But black has to be careful not to take that one too quickly. Um, you don't want to open up the play for the bishops. But this is very prudent. I mean, there is such harmony in the black position now. Queen c2 defends the pawn. Knight e6, that's where the knight belongs. Looking at the f4 square. So black really in control and white just can't do very much at all. F3 protects that pawn, knight f4, bishop dropped back to f1. So basically Caruana has achieved the perfect position. The only question now is 
how do you move forward? Because at some point, black has to open the position. But when you do that, that might give the bishops a chance. So you've got to be extremely careful. But c6 is an excellent move. Because he's going to try to break with d5. And he managed to get that in d5. That little nudge to e6 was very nice, actually, because quite often that rook can actually get involved along the third rank, switching towards white's king. And here, well, black should probably try to hold firm with rook e3, but it, it still looks very, very good for black, actually. g3 played, and... The king side is about to open. This was just too risky. But like I said, I think things have certainly taken a turn for white. Caruana exchanged. And here, actually, g4 is very strong, opening up the position. Um, the problem was that Fabiano was running somewhat short of time. He still had, well, eight moves to make in this position. And if you're going to make a move like uh, g4, you have to be absolutely certain. The basic idea is that the knight comes in check. And after this, well, queen e4 is actually very strong. But, you know, you have to, you still have to be very careful. I mean, black, I guess, should be winning this position. But, yeah, with threats here, but, you know... When you're short of time, things can still go wrong here, but I, I guess it must be winning. So instead of g4, I'm sure he saw it, but wasn't couldn't be absolutely sure, he took on e4, which also guarantees black the advantage, but without uh, the jeopardy of giving up a piece. White's best here is to recapture, but then the knight can simply drop back, and it's going to... Come to f6, where it looks at the weak pawn on e4, and that knight can also come into g4. And, well, with black's pieces lined up like this, the e4 pawn is gone. I think black is basically winning this position as well. But it, it's in a, a slightly slower way. But, yeah, black's pieces are so well coordinated. Okay, let's go back to this position. So Fabiano, who's just taken on e4, and Wojtaszek took the knight. But this opens the king's side fatally. These pieces just burning to break into the position, and it's going to happen. So that's check. If king h1, then simply queen h7, and the rook comes across to h6. That's why this was a very clever, very prescient little nudge forward with the rook, actually. I'm sure Fabi did that intentionally before he broke with d5. So queen checks. Queen g2. Pawn takes pawn on f3. Queen takes queen. Rook takes queen check. Now, black has sacrificed a piece, but he has four pawns for it, and... More to the point, the king is in desperate trouble. If king f2, here's a really nice move. Rook g3, threatening knight g4, checkmate. It's hard to get out of that one. Well, with sensible moves anyway. Rook g6, check. King h1, f2. Threatening something big down here. Bishop h3. And now, very nice winning move. Knight c4, threatening the bishop. That was taken, and now rook e1 check was the final move of the game. Um, well, you can see, obviously exchanging will give black a new queen, and when the king steps up... Uh, well, it's, it's, it's gone, basically. We can, we can take... The rook and yeah it's it's all over um well what uh, a fascinating strategic decision 
to exchange on c3 and, and it caught out uh, Wojtaszek totally. You know, there were moments when he could have got, I think, reasonable compensation for the pawn, but I think he was just um, flabbergasted by this unusual decision to give up this, the, the, the pride and joy of your position, the bishop on g7. Fa absolutely fascinating. And, well, I wonder, I have a feeling we might be seeing a lot more of bishop g4 in future games. Uh, it's just another way that um, black can try and unsettle white. It was very interesting in the interview afterwards, Fabiano said that with, um, well, using the very powerful computers, he, he basically said it, it's clear that the King's Indian, King's Indian has a lot of potential. So we shouldn't be writing it off, as I have liked to do in the past. Uh, not so soon, anyway. Thanks for watching.